Hey, what's up guys? Just wanted to show you how I fish for sharks and rays at night. So your favorite species are out of season or they're just not biting or, you know, whatever you're catching just isn't really footing the bill to satisfy that tug. As we all know, the tug is a drug and there really isn't much more that can consistently give you action than a good bay shark or ray. They're plentiful, they're pretty easy to catch and most importantly, they're available year round. Now this video is specifically focused at night because that's when I can personally catch rays and sharks based on my schedule, but I've actually had more success catching them at night too. I think they're mostly nocturnal feeders. I mean, you can catch them throughout the day. Um, sometimes they're deep, but I'm talking about, you know, shore casting, preferably at night. That's when they're most active. And uh, frankly, that's when I have the time to catch them. So, you know, everything that you see in this video today applies to either night or daytime, you know, shore fishing for sharks and rays. Uh, the biggest difference, I guess, would be a headlamp and understanding, um, you know, tides and moon phase. I found that, you know, depending on the mood phase, it really affects the amount of tide and tide swing and how much volume of water is actually moving. So really, you know, sharks and rays are available anywhere in the bay. That's what's so uh, great about them. There are uh, concentrations of them if you know where to go. Um, it's all kind of, you know, based on um, trial and error. And uh, you just need to know really two things. In my opinion, the shark and ray bite is best, you know, two hours before peak high and two hours after. When there's a lot of volume of water and it's moving, that's typically when they press into shore and bite. Sharks and rays often congregate in relatively shallow, muddy water. They're, you know, swimming along, sifting through the mud, looking for all kinds of stuff. They feed on on anything, really. Uh, you know, they're looking for crabs, uh, bait fish, dead fish, dead squid. Um, they're foraging as much as they are hunting. So you want to take advantage of that and find yourselves in an area that's, you know, number one, relatively easy to cast from because you are going to be out there at night. You don't want to fall and slip into the water. So you want, you know, some spot that's going to be relatively easy to manage and walk along. And, um, you know, you, you want enough volume of water that can allow the sharks and rays to slip in and Typically, if it's a low tide or a you know late outgoing tide, there's not going to be enough water to to support those sharks and rays in the feeding mode. So you want to be able to cast into you know at least four foot of water, I think, and to really you know understand where those areas are, you might have to scout the bay a little bit. There are a lot more popular spots than others, and uh, typically, if you find one spot that's a pretty productive, good chances are those sharks and rays are consistently going to be there if you go at the right time. So uh, now that you know when to go, I'll show you what to bring. First and foremost, if you could have a, a headlamp, uh, go with a rechargeable unit. Um, this is a cheap one I found on Amazon. It works okay. It gives me about three hours of decent runtime, and uh, it takes about uh, you know six hours to charge it to, to full capacity. Um, you definitely need you know good light because again, you might be in a pretty sketchy area. You know, you might lose your footing pretty easily if you're casting near the water's edge. So you want to illuminate uh, your area as as much as possible. So don't cheap out on a good headlamp. This is I think like $20 on Amazon with Prime. There are like, you know, much more expensive, much brighter units. So um, don't skimp on good lighting. Uh, I definitely recommend a rechargeable unit because as we know, batteries for units like this burn out quickly and uh, it can add up. So go rechargeable if you can. The other thing I recommend is a hook remover. Um, you know, not a lot of the species you're targeting are going to have teeth. Uh, seven gill sharks have teeth, but leopards don't really have teeth. Uh, rays really don't have teeth. Um, but you don't want to get your hand in a big seven gill if you don't have to. And plus, you know, the, the sharks and rays are pretty slimy. So if you can, bring a hook remover because it allows you to remove the hook safely and efficiently. So definitely uh, recommend a hook remover. And of course, pliers because, you know, if you don't have a hook remover, these double as that. Uh, but you also want something that can easily, uh, you know, um, crimp your crimps, uh, cut heavy braid if you have to. Um, you know, a decent set of fishing pliers is a must. And, uh, you know, I'm a spinning guy. I typically don't bring casting gear out there, especially at nighttime because I'm not very good at casting. And also, I can't really see where that bait lands. This light only goes so far. So, you know, I can't 
know when to stop um, that spool uh, when it lands. So I typically bring spinning gear and uh, you want something that's pretty heavy duty, something all alloy if you can, something salt water rated because you are fishing the bay and there's a good chance you can get sprayed. Um, this is a 4000 pen battle too and yeah it'll do the job but you know there's a good chance you can get into something really big. Those rays top out at about 100 pounds in the bay. You know your average one I think is like the 5 to 10 pound range but if you want to be able to catch a ray of a lifetime, you're going to want to go big. So I definitely suggest something in the 6,000, maybe 8,000 range just in case. So this is an 8,000 size conflict. More than enough, I think, to put the brakes on a large ray. Um, I typically go with at least 50 pound braid, something like that. Um, and, you know, pretty heavy surf rod. I like my 11 foot heavy crabbing rods. Those typically have enough power to stop a ray and bring it in. Um, today, I think I'm going to go out with an 11 foot Akuma Solaris and a 10,000 size Aragosa just because um, that's kind of the high end gear I have as far as uh, trash fishing. And uh, that's what I want to bring to give me a good shot at landing some good stuff. Okay, so we've covered the main gear. Let's talk about what I carry as far as terminal tackle. This is my dedicated, you know, heavy saltwater uh, Plano box. I definitely recommend Plano boxes in, in a bunch of them for your different styles of uh, fishing and, you know, having one or two for a specific species. This one's kind of dedicated to sharks and rays. And uh, I'll go through it really quick uh, to show you what I use. So feel free to follow along. Um, if you are not uh, gonna follow along here and you already have this gear and you just wanna see the fishing action, go to the minute marker right here to get the fishing started. But till then, let me cover what I have uh, as far as terminal tackle and follow along if you don't have any of this stuff and if you need help gearing up for sharks and rays. So as far as weight, uh, I prefer pyramid weights. The bottom of the bay is very silty and uh, if the current is ripping, it's moving really fast, uh, super fast. And anything not shaped like a pyramid is gonna push uh, you know, left or right uh, basically wherever the water wants it. So definitely go with the pyramid. I think this is a five ounce uh, pyramid uh, weight. Uh, I definitely recommend, you know, have have a bunch between four and six ounces. Depending on the current, you're going to want uh, something pretty heavy to secure your bait presentation to the bottom. As far as quick clips, go pretty heavy. Again, those rays pull like freaking buses. And uh, you don't want to be caught with your pants down with the wrong uh, terminal tackle or the wrong swivel. So I go with a Coast Lock 100-pound uh, swivel. These are very difficult to break. If you do snag, your line's going to pop before this does. Um, but go heavy because this shouldn't be a point of failure. They're a little more expensive than your typical uh, quick links. Um, your snap swivels, but uh, you know, if I, I've lost heavy game before on those cheap, you know, eagle claw brass ones, the ones rated at 30 pounds, 40 pounds. So go heavy if you can. This is a hundred pound. Uh, I use these for crab snaring, and I've never had a failure with these. So you know, definitely go with these and learn how to tie a palomar knot. Um, I don't really recommend a uni. Palomar knots are easy to tie, super easy, and they're really, really, really strong. So definitely recommend those. Um, as far as hooks. I definitely, definitely recommend that you go barbless. Now, this might be a point of contention for some of you guys. I know a lot of you guys like to use barbs regardless, but I found that sharks and ray mouths are so tough and their skins are so tough that when they bite, you know, the hooks will pierce their mouths. The barb just won't back through and they're very difficult to back through without damaging the animal and uh, harming the animal in my opinion. Um, so I go barbless if possible. These are my barbed ones. I prefer these right here. These are my barbless. These are Gamagatsu octopus hooks in a 5 aught size. I like to go 5 aught, 6 aught. I know some guys use um, 8 aught for the really big rays. Um, I think 6 aught is pretty good for the average ray that you're going to catch around uh, the bay, especially from shore, um, sharks too. So go barbless. The nice thing about barbless hooks, obviously, is that there is no barb to um, contend with when you're trying to back it out. Uh, they slip right out. You know, as soon as the, the ray or shark commits and they bite and you set that hook, they normally, you know, really don't spit the hook. They're not really like that. They kind of just turn and want to get away, and there really are no head shakes. So um, definitely recommend barbless if you can, because trust me, when you land the animal, you're going to want to get it in the water as soon as possible, and being able to back out a hook is really, really easy with uh, a barbless. 
if you're if you're leaving a barb on, trust me, you're going to have a hard time getting it off, and you might decide to cut the hook uh, to save the animal. That's what I used to do before I went barbless. Um, I go with stainless steel leaders. This is another six aught barbless hook here. Um, why do I go with stainless steel? It's not like a lot of animals out there that you're targeting have uh, teeth. There really is nothing that's going to really nick, um, you know, a heavy mono or fluoro except for a good size seven gill. Um, but the reason why I run barbless primarily is because your leader is on the bottom. It's getting pushed left and right by the current. A big ray, a big shark, they're hugging the bottom. They're not, you know, in the middle or the top of the water column. So you want your leaders to have a lot of durability. And, uh, you know, steel leaders are really good at, you know, not chafing as uh, your line goes back and forth along rocks. And because you're fishing the bay, you know, you might be contending with... Uh, hold car batteries and shopping carts kid you not there's some spots i like to go to there's shopping carts out there tires and rims and stuff like that all kinds of car parts so um you know it's not glamorous you need something that's tough that can be able to uh rub against all that kind of stuff without breaking and uh you know a ray can take you around a bridge piling it can take you everywhere same as with, same thing with a big shark so go like 50 to maybe like 70 pound liter if possible you know some guys run 100 pound uh, steel leader is definitely recommended if you don't go with a steel leader definitely recommend a heavy mono uh, leader maybe like 50 pound minimum something like that because uh, you never know what's going to take your whole setup and run with it and uh, i think minimum 50 pound leader is the way to go for that for that kind of uh you know targeted species another thing i have in the box here is magic thread so super super important to have this why because my go-to suggested uh, bait presentation for sharks and rays is a combination of sardines anchovies or squid so definitely squid and uh, you know anchovies or sardines uh, if you have them definitely do a combo of and this is how I like to hook my stuff so you know I take my hook um, and I take a chunk of squid I, I put it on the hook right and then I slip on my anchovy um, kind of next to it, right? And I need that magic thread to tie it all together. Anchovy, sardines, typically, you know, it's going to be frozen. And uh, that water is going to be moving, so that bait's going to be melting off. And there's a lot of, you know, little critters in the silt that are going to be wanting to steal it. So don't be shy with the magic thread. Wrap it up like a mummy as much as you can because that, you know, sardine, those uh, anchovies, they're the first to go. But you need them to help broadcast the scent. I've had a lot of luck using a combination of squid and anchovy. And the only way it stays on the hook is if you use the magic thread and tie it all together really tight. And when I do that, um, I make sure that the tip of the hook, actually like half of the hook, so halfway up the shank, all the way to the hook point here, is sticking out and exposed. So don't bury the point if you can help it. Um, having that tip exposed allows for uh, that hook to kind of swing along, uh, you know, kind of freely as the animal's feeding and uh, set itself in the corner of the mouth. I used to bury my hooks and uh, I heard that leaving the hook point exposed um, was a good way to catch uh, the lip or, you know, the, the, the interior of the, of the uh, animal's mouth um, a lot more securely and uh, it's definitely paid off. If you've if you're familiar with my channel, you've seen that um, that's how I present my bait, and it typically works really, really, really well. So because you're going to be dealing with all that yucky stuff, I definitely, I definitely recommend some kind of uh, gloves. You know, I used to use latex gloves, and I kind of got tired of them breaking. So just really quickly, I definitely recommend nitrile gloves. These are the brand. Uh, this is the brand that I've been using. They work great. I use them for crabbing. I use them for all my uh, dirty trash fishing. Um, yeah, these uh, Amex professional series black nitro gloves way to go man I, I love these things these are my go-to and i don't see myself dropping out from these at any time soon these will be in the description below as well as everything used in this video so hopefully this is a um, you know a nice little tutorial of what to use and what to bring all this stuff i consider necessary there's nothing in here i don't need um definitely recommend um, you guys provide yourselves with the minimum all the stuff i've talked about um today oh and one more thing a good bell because you're fishing at night and because you're casting out into the darkness, you don't really know if your uh, rod tip is going to go off, you know, visually. So you're going to need some kind of audible cue to, to see when or to hear when there's action on the line. So get yourself a decent sized bell. Again, don't uh, cheap out. This is a nice, uh, I think, brass or copper one from uh, Big Five. It was like 
couple bucks for a two pack definitely 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 recommended and uh have a couple of these these uh, get lost very easily when you're fishing at night trust me so don't skimp on the bells either so yeah let's take all of our gear let's take what we've learned let's go out to the bay and uh, let's see if we can put ourselves on some trash fish let's do it all right what's good guys really windy evening out here targeting sharks and rays uh, you know my setup, you've seen my last couple of uh, Ray videos, they kind of did really well, you know, for my little channel. I guess you guys like watching me catch uh, these big stinky Rays on some uh, crappy gear. But you know what, this time I got the legit stuff. Got my 11 foot heavy crabbing rod with a 10,000 saltwater Saragossa. Awesome gear, awesome setup, we're going to do things right, 60 pound braid. And uh, I am going barbless because I don't like to mess around with the barb and these big Rays and sharks. And uh, I'm going to throw on a piece of squid, piece of anchovy, take some of this magic thread, wrap it around, cast it, and see what happens. Now, the water is ripping. Uh, it's about two hours before high. A lot of water moving. The last time I was here, the water was moving that fast. Um, I caught a bunch of stuff. So hoping, hoping I can get some action for tonight. Haven't really shot a, a, a proper night video in a long time, so looking forward to it. Let's do it. Here we go. First rig. All right, and that's the power of magic thread right there. If you have bait that's been frozen for a while, it's gonna kind of um, disintegrate and melt on you. So using that magic thread at least keeps the stuff together long enough for most species to come find it. So we'll see, we'll see if it works. I'm gonna walk out onto these uh, sketchy rocks out here. If you guys see what's going on in the background, you're probably familiar with this spot. If you're local to this area, we're gonna cast it in. Put a bell on, see if we can get hooked up. Let's do it. He was born in the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> but we had a US passport. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. What a catch. Oh, set the hook, set the hook. Set it. Did you miss it? Uh, it's not still on. What is it? I'm not sure. Come on, Black Tip H. I'm gonna call you Brown Tip J. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it fighting at all? Yeah, a little shark. Oh. Oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah, tighten your jack, dude. Yeah, Got a decent leopard. Here, here, I'll leader it. Damn, Jay, how come every time we go out, you catch a good leopard? That's a nice size, bro. The same size as I got last time. Huh? Yeah. No, I think this is bigger. It looks pretty big compared to the last picture. <laughs> yeah, this one's a big. This one's bigger than the last one you caught. Yeah. Dang, was this on squid too? Oh yeah, on the squid. Nice. Yeah. All right, Jay, you want to toss him back? Yeah, I'll toss him back. <laughs> cool. Nice, dude. Action. That's a nice bigger one, huh? That's big. Yeah. Nice, dude. What do you hold it, Ish? Uh, so just hold it really like tight behind uh, here, because they they like to whip around real hard, Wait, and then grab his tail too. Firm. Yeah. Tail. There you go. And just be careful yeah, going. Hold it firm because it'll swim around and try to bite. Oh, it's peeing. Oh yeah, it's gonna pee on you too. You can do a skin just now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just watch out. You don't slip. You could probably chuck him from here. <laughs> All right. Here's the uh, YouTube unfriendly release. Gonna get a lot of dislikes for this one. Nice, dude. Yeah. Good fight. <laughs> All right, Jay's on the First board. On the board. <laughs> First one. Yeah. All right, Mikey, we're due. Let's go. Good job, Good job man. Yeah, I, um, I don't know if you saw, but I, I like I came up with a logo. Was that me? That's yeah. oh, that sounded that sounded good. I did put fresh bait out there. Oh, nice. There we go, huh? 
Oh, what is that? Is that my first seven? Is that my first seven gill? Yeah. Yeah. I was targeting yeah. these guys forever. Lord. Yes. Yeah, these guys' teeth is crazy. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Dude. It's, yeah. Hey, take, take a take a picture. I've never caught a seven gill before, but I'm, I am using um, barbless. So it should pop right out. There you go. Nice. All right, new species. Baby seven. Uh oh. All right. I think it's your leader or hook tangled on a rock. Oh, oh. Here, here, here. ran to the left oh what are you whoa there's a ray I think it's a ray oh, come here. Where is it going? It's a, it's a probably a, a ray, probably like a 10 pound ray. Yep. Nice. Damn, dude, that was a good one. <sighs> Big Ray. Man, they're getting bigger. It's getting bigger ish. Yeah. I wonder, right? Oh. See, this is why we this is why we use barbless right here. Ready? So easy. <sighs> okay. Right. This is a bat ray. A lot of people don't like to catch these, but man, they're so much fun. <sighs> I just don't, just don't want to get stabbed by these guys. People say pick them up by their crush plates, so that's what I want to do. So hopefully I'm doing this right. Baby Ray, probably 10 pounds. And we'll see, Woo. And we'll see you later, bud. Ugh. Ugh.